Howdy, folks. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew, and it is time for my Cowboy Logic segment. Guys, let me tell you something. I, if, I'm married to a pretty little thing, been together about 16 years, and uh, something that took me a long time to learn after a first marriage and 10-year hiatus and all that stuff and in dealing with women, there are two theories to arguing with a woman. Neither one of them works. See, and I just thought I'd do this because it's kind of funny. I, I talk to my wife about this all the time. I'll go into the house and she'll start off on some little deal. And, you know, I mean, I, I've just learned to admit that I'm wrong because a guy understands that instead of arguing with what you can either be right or you can be happy. And it took me till I was probably 58 years old that I'm far better to realize that I'm far better off going, you're right, baby. Doesn't matter what it is. Just let her have it. It takes a... You know, uh, Brent, my partner, he's played this uh, this comedian, and he's a pa- he's a preacher. And he goes in there and he says that women have about 20,000 words a day they need to use. Men have about 10,000. But men go to the office, and they're sitting there with their buddies, and they by the time they get home, they've burned through their 10,000 words. But the wife's been home. My wife doesn't work. She's retired. She's been home. She's had no one to use those 20,000 words on. So when I come walking in the door, it's a rat tat tat. I mean, it's like machine gun, man. She's hitting me with everything you can imagine. There was a time I used to try to defend it or so no, that wasn't me or it. None of it matters. She's going to burn those words up on you. And the best thing you can do, my wife says to me, honey, are you getting hard of hearing? And I go, huh? <laughs> what I've learned to do is pay attention to things that are important. Let those that aren't important just go because arguing with a woman doesn't work. Love you, baby. <laughs> Listen to this. Just because trouble comes visiting doesn't mean you have to offer it a place to sit down. I tell you what, y'all may have heard me say this on this segment before. When I was a kid, you know, six brothers, seven of us, all born within 11 years on this little farm in the middle of nowhere. And I hate to admit it, my wife will tell you we were heathens. And I'll agree with her. All of my brothers were heathens except me, of course. You know, as a middle child, I wasn't a heathen. But I can't tell you how many times I had those temptations to go and do. I, I was in more trouble as a kid, and I, I, it took me a long time to learn to not give it an opportunity to sit down and influence me in the things I was doing. And by that, I wasn't trying to be in trouble. It's just everything seemed to be a challenge. One time I asked my dad, I said, Pop, you give me more work than you do any of the other boys, and it's unfair. He said, Drew, if I didn't keep your little butt busy, all the time, you'd lead all of them into trouble. Now, as about a 13, 14 year old kid, I remember thinking about that and realizing he was right. So, folks, just learn a little bit. As you go on, you're going through life. When trouble comes around, you don't have to give it a seat. You can avoid it. And it's taken me a long time, but I've learned to do it. It's good, sage advice. Finally, and this is a big one, folks, especially for the entitlement. Uh, that goes on, especially with young people nowadays, they feel like they're owed everything. Don't let your yearnings get ahead of your earnings. And folks, this is as anti-bank and anti-credit card and everything as you can be. For many, many years, and I'm a guy who went broke in 2008, and I'd always had plenty of money, could do pretty much anything that I wanted to do. And then all of a sudden, when you go in and your earnings don't keep up with your yearnings and you go get in debt and you borrow a bunch of money and circumstances may be beyond your control. Doesn't matter. You're far better off having fewer things that you can pay cash for than going out there and putting all these really neat, shiny things on a credit card. I had a guy tell me many, many years ago. He said, Drew, don't ever go and buy a real fancy dinner on a credit card. Because by the time you have to pay that bill, you forgot how good that steak was. And there's a lot of truth to that. So I'll say it again. Don't let your yearnings get ahead of your earnings. If you'll stay ahead of them and invest some of those earnings in cryptocurrency, you'll be glad you did. You can thank me in, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. Folks, thanks for always tuning in to the Wild West Crypto Show. We hope that you learned some things, had a little bit of fun, maybe a laugh or two. And we appreciate you all always tuning in every week. And share us with your friends, folks. We're pretty harmless. We'll see you again here next week.